and hello everybody and welcome to the finals of the player of the year mega draft and what a journey it has been we have our finals matchup between dan beat jambringa the dmu champion and the boros terror of every slow opening hand uh, and flooded draw who's just bashed his way here to the finals and we've got richard koffler longtime leaguer three week league specialist and champion of the Shadows Over Innistrad Remastered League from this year on the blue-red deck, which we haven't seen in action yet, but when we did do a pool review, these were the two decks that we identified as being maybe a cut above the rest, and here they are in the finals. Yes, indeed. And, you know, this uh, interesting format that has been played for Player of the Year is not unlike a three-week league. So I think uh, Richard's bonus has been in effect. Unfortunately, not good enough to uh, save him from Mulligan. He's mm -hmm. trying to decide now, uh, of the five spells that he has, which one he wants to get rid of. He ends up bottoming a Pyroceratops, keeping in land a uh, Gitu Chronicler, Cunning Geyser Mage, Excavation Explosion, and the Mighty Koth Planeswalker. Okay. Dan's got a pretty wild opening of hand here. He's got headlining it, two Savai Thundermans. Uh, and then a Cub Warding, a Scrapper Champion, and a Dranith Healer, which does cycle. So we could see Thundermane's doing some good work here. We've already got one Cycler. It would cost a lot of mana to get both to trigger, but potentially could be, uh, you know, uh, kill two creatures, draw a card for five mana if the Thundermane's both live. Oh, unfortunately for Koffler, he has uh, not yet drawn his land, even Ooh. with looking at three additional cards. Uh, drew Vindictive Flame Stoker for the turn and now has Excavation Explosions ready to go, ready to defend him versus these thunder mains and i believe we'll see one of them oh, that's... probably used here okay. to clear out that is a relief because we're still like it, it would be a bit too much i think to have the first game in our player leader finals be decided in the same way as a couple of the other of dan's games have been where their opponent just doesn't get off the ground uh he's drawn another cycler which um it's not going to kill the three draw the three toughness creature but anything small is now liable to get laser beamed by that thundercat um, yeah, I think that Flame Stoker is going to be uh, laser beamed when it hits the field. Well, he might instead just mutate Cub Warden onto. Or actually, is the mutate on Cub Warden white white? Let me look that up. It is white white. Yeah, yes. that, that felt right. So he's not actually able to mutate Cub Warden onto the Double Striker just yet, though I imagine that'll be pretty powerful whenever it does land. Um, um, unfortunately, not possible because that is a human oh. artificer. Uh, extra not possible now because it's dead um, and so instead <laughs> he could mutate the cat onto the oh sorry again he can't mutate he's got a couple of options here he could yeah looks like he can attack and just play the cub warden I don't think we've seen hard cast cub warden um, I think if you put money on that at the beginning of uh, the draft uh, I would have asked for better than even odds uh, that it would never mm -hmm. happen but here it is on the board a 3-5 lifelink what's Richard going to do about it um, it seems like Richard is potentially eyeing his cost. He does have a mere convert in hand, so he can double spell with whatever he wants to do, and he could even triple spell if he wants to not bounce Cunning Guy's Mage. But what I predict is likely he'll uh, get Koth on the board, uh, start getting some mountains, or sorry, uh, shooting the Thundermane. Okay. And uh, putting up blocker. Oh wow! For Koth potentially. Look at the Power Stones being uh, living their best life over there. Mir Convert, mm -hmm. pretty remarkable that um, he managed to sequence everything such that he could, um, you know, land the 2-1 and not have it get killed by the Thundercat. Uh, and now suddenly these Cyclers in, in Dan's hand, they don't do all that much. They just replace themselves. So it looks like here he's, what's he going to do? He's just going to cycle Startling Development. Good start. The card doesn't do anything else. Um, he's drawn a Hex Gold Slash, so he could... Well, I mean, he could always attack Koth and force a chunk, but now he can, um, I suppose, kill the other one too, as well as play out either a Catcher's Avenger or Power Stone Engineer. It looks like he's just going to kill the Convert now. Sure, timing doesn't matter all that much. Um, and I got to imagine it's going to be Avenger here, which really hard to block this thing. 3-1 exerts to be indestructible. Um, what's Richard got to save his Koth? I think uh, he doesn't really have much. Um, he can put some more Chumpers if he wishes. He can drop Vindictive Flamestoker as well as his Cunning Geyser Mage. 
uh, and not kick it. Uh, unfortunately, his Hercule two four currently is unplayable. Oh, interesting. So it looks like he is going to run out the two creatures. I would be surprised to see him double chump here. Like cough is good, but that feels like maybe putting too many eggs in the cough basket. Like, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think he's just letting it go. That feels like the right call to me. Like, you're certainly behind here, but I don't think it gets any better if you um, if you were to throw both your creatures away to save Koth. And uh, Dan's a bit choked on, on planes here. He's only got white spells on hand, can only play one thing a turn. Um, mm -hmm. So Richard isn't going to be under too, too much pressure, uh, at least for a turn or two. Yeah, and luckily for Richard, he has drawn a weak stone subjugation, which he one. can uh, use on the Cub Warden, and then Flame Stoker. He doesn't need to pay for he can that. Pay Flame for Stoker now only costs stones. six mana. Yeah, and the power. So he can stones. actually, yeah, he can pay for that. All right. So yeah, being able to. Does it just draw four? Do you have to pitch your hand as well? You have to pitch your hand, okay. so he will have to decide, is Herkel worth uh, keeping? Yeah, being uncast, that being the last card, grid card, but uncastable is just unfortunate. Um, he's just going to take the trade here. All right, I don't hate it. And this uh, he might also be waiting to see, like, all right, how much is my opponent developing here? Mm -hmm. How how big of a threat am I under? Do I have the time answer is, a five mana four four, which, you know, hits pretty hard. And we're gonna see, yeah, we're gonna see the new hand for Richard, and it it needs to have some cards in it. That's that's for sure. What did he get? It has some cards. Unfortunately, he's only drawn another mount. He has his Enter the God Eternals, but is still a blue and a black off from sure. casting it. Um, he's got Pyroceratops, Combat Celebrant, and Tybalt Rakish Instigator. Hmm. So I imagine we will probably see uh, both of the three drops here. Yeah, so the... What the pinger sort of does is it makes... Hmm. It looks like it should do better against the Catcher's Avenger, but it doesn't really. <laughs> I guess you can chump Warlord's Elite with it and then ping Avenger, and that sort of forces Avenger to have exerted even if... Uh, it might not be the block, but if a catcher Avenger is attacking and not deserted, you just block with a one one anyway. So I don't really know how that works. How that's gonna. Uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like a good answer to Avenger. Um, Honestly, the Celebrants being a good blocker here, just shutting down this Warlord's Elite and being like, yeah, so I, I don't who, toughness. Who needs toughness? That's that's for uh, that's for other decks. Mm -hmm. Drawn another Warlord's Elite here, so he's the, the the one planes thing has really choked out um, Dan's Dan's draw here, and yeah, they're both having very uh, interestingly mirrored mana situations. Both yeah, of them, uh, and it hasn't really been affecting Richard that much, but the end of the Cod Eternals missing is, uh, you know, it's it's going to be a while before he can resolve. Yeah, that. and having and to pitch the Oracle must have hurt too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got Prison Realm on the board here. Um, and he's just not sure what he's going to take. I I feel like you could take, yeah, and then full send at Tibble. Uh, okay, order send with the Avenger? I don't... Hmm. Yeah, you're, you're probably not going to have Richard throw away his Celebrant. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That All right, Coffer like... now has the blue okay. and is just missing black. So his last card is the God Eternals. Mm -hmm. What did we see as the fixing in his deck? Um, uh, let me check. go and look at his actual pool while uh, you keep There was the Mirror the Convert. Audience There's a Farfinder in there somewhere. Um, yes, there is a Farfinder. He's got two uh, black lands, Underground River, which is mm -hmm. a brother... Brothers War land that uh, pings you when you ever when you have to tap for colored, and he has a Bloodfell Caves that so it looks uh, like when it ETBs you can win. At least three live draws, maybe a couple of um, swamps in the deck as well. I'm not sure. 
Um, yes. Dan's last card in hand is a Warlord Elite in the Plains. Um, so it looks like he's going to take the trade here with the Celebrant and then play the second one. And I'm looking in the sideboard to see if there's any additional fixing that might not be there, and doesn't seem like that's the case. So really just a... Uh... Oh, interesting. Hmm. I just noticed that there is a Mirari Conjecture in Cobbler's sideboard. That is a powerful Which... card, but I, I, I get him not wanting to risk it. This Firefinder yeah. is a great draw here, which means I gotta yeah. reread everything Enter the God Eternals does. <laughs> it deals four damage to target creature, and you gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. The target player will mill four cards, and, you and then you will four. amass four. I'm not sure I understand milling Dan instead of yourself, but other than that, that looked pretty phenomenal. Uh, and indeed, mm -hmm. we were looking at some angry emotes from Dan, who's started drawing nothing but planes. Uh, and suddenly the game's flipped uh, right in its head. Richard's got yeah. two cards that cannot be properly blocked by Dan's board, and, and uh, they're going to start attacking. And Dan's got to make some choices soon. An absolutely Oof. nutty draw. And Jesus. the beats don't stop. Dan's getting the beats brought, brought to him. When he's drawing... Oh, this is actually really neat. He's drawing a Crawling Barons here. So that is four to pump. Um, so it can only oh, be two, uh, two. Never mind about all that, though. What? Well, you'll see in a couple seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Holy smokes. Did Richard cast, like, three consecutive Empiric Tutors that I didn't notice? Like, those were some, <laughs> those were some draws. Yeah, those were some insane draws. He's going to make a 4-4. Uh, uh, well, he's not technically dead. He would live at 1, but he's dead in spirit, uh, <laughs> which is close yeah. enough. Jesus. <laughs> so what's, what's the sideboard a... plan going to be for our, for our players here? Hmm. Well, sorry, for uh, for Dan or yeah. for Cuff? Well, I'm looking at Dan. What's, what's Richard doing over there? Let's see. Richard's moving Riddle Form off to the side. He's saying, you know, the occasional extra evasive damage this gets me is not worth the times where I can't uh, activate this instant speed to block because yeah, you're going to aggress for, me. For when you're the one attacking, that is for sure. Yeah. I, I have to imagine that he's going to be bringing in his Deep Freeze. Um, mm. You know, it's clunky removal, but removal it still is. And I feel like he's confident. He, sh he should maybe feel confident that uh, he goes over the top better than Dan does. Looks like Dan's brought in Keldon Overseer, which seems reasonable to me. Like, Richard's uh, creature count is on the lower side. Uh, he's also brought in a Skizix, which is like the mm -hmm. big ball lightning that doesn't have to sack itself if you play kicker. So he's seeing that Richard's got fewer creatures that, with maybe a bit of a flimsy creature count, and he's sort of brought in some creatures that are good against narrower boards where you don't mm -hmm. necessarily have um you know the the one ones to block kelvin over here and chunk the stolen creature and you don't have the toughness to trade with the skizix properly um i don't know what he's going to cut yet so so let's see let's see what he does, let's see what he decides to do there um Koffler, meanwhile not too many changes, just still has the riddle form off to the side, trying to find something that he would rather have other than it. And I see a couple that I think could be good inclusions for him, uh, including the deep freeze, as I said before, and then he's also been... Ah! Whoa! Okay! Yeah. Uh, Koffler has two Chandra's defeats in his side, <laughs> and both of them are coming in, likely to Damn. great effect. Can we, can we get a tech oracle text on Chandra's defeat? Yes. Uh, let me it's read a that red out. hate, right? Yes, it's red hate. Mm. It is instant. Chandra's defeat deals five damage to target red creature or red planeswalker. If that permanent, uh, never mind. Uh, it, he's not going to be. He's not going to. Okay, that's not going to come up. So, uh, Most of Dan's but, creatures are white. Like I would say, out of Dan's creature count, um, it wasn't just coincidence that he, you know, was choked on planes and had so many white cards to play. Dan, like looking mm -hmm. at his white creatures, he's his red creatures rather. He's only got like I don't know six of them. Like the two cats, 
the two one first strike, uh, the chimney rattle, the double striker, and the rebel token off the equipment. And that's that's a complete list. I did not just stop listing them because I you know wanted to move on. That's that's all I can see that he's playing in his pool. So those cards might be dead in Richard's hand, which is a bit unfortunate. I don't think he. I think if he knew. Um, you know, Dan's deck list. That's not a choice he would have made. But actually, what he's done in the end is he's uh, wisely considered what he has seen and uh, only put one of them in. Oh, what a, uh, what a smart, responsible guy. <laughs> yeah, that's the Koffler we know. Dan. All right. So Dan's, what have we got going on? Dan's snap kept his hand. It's got Draneth Healer into... Well, like, you can't curve it into Warlords Elite, actually. It's got True Drop, True Drop, Four Drop, but Warlords Elite is kind of fake. It has Cub Wardens, the four drop. That is maybe why he did it this way. He also chose... He has a Sejiri Shelter as his land for it, but he chose not to play it turn one. He's kept it, I think, in case he drew more lands. Um, but so far, he's drawn two non-lands, so he's going to have to play it this turn. And this isn't actually making him skip his turn three, because his turn three is Warlords Elite, which he can't cast, but it's still a bit unfortunate. What's Richard got yeah. going on over there? So Richard's got gas on gas. He's got Farfinder to fix everything. He's got Tibble to block for it. He's got a Cloud Piercer, which he can uh, then, you know, do a bit of a rummage either next turn or on the Farfinder after. And he's got Gitu Chronicler to bring back either Sheevan Fire, Excavation Explosion, or whatever else. So um, all in all, uh, this is looking to be gearing up to be a very, uh, as long as both of them keep on drawing well, a very tight and interesting game. We've got our second hard cast Cub Warden of the, of the draft on the board right now, which doesn't have lifelink, even though it looks like it does. What's up with this attack? Is this, it's not enter the god pharaohs. Um, that attack is due to the excavation explosion that was just uh, uh, okay. object. That makes sense. I know Cloud Piercer, okay. Interesting. I kind of missing on five damage there, you could argue. Um, I believe mm -hmm. Tybalt still prevents the life gain if you attack Tybalt with a lifelinker. Um, and this is going to get pacifism here. And suddenly, Ooh. you know, suddenly this is, uh, this is still an even game, for sure. Yeah. These Warlords Elites in, in Dan's hand are, are being a bit awkward. Um, they've been good some games, but they've been, they've been a bit awkward in others, which I guess is just the nature of the card. Mm -hmm. And now Koffler is trying to decide, I guess, what he exactly wants to do. And I imagine it has to be Farfinder followed by a mere convert. I imagine the Gitu Chronicler, he wants to get something back with. Excavation Explosion doesn't yet have any strong targets. So looks like it's just going to be a simple uh, two colorless cards and pass it back. Yeah, and the Cub Warden not exactly beating down the quickest. Did he go search... Mountain three. That was, I guess, in case he draws cough. Um, yeah, most likely he has an island, in it, so oh, he does so he have the mana. I was expecting him to get the god pharaoh mana, but yeah, if he's got yeah. island two already, he's got no need for that. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, the the mirrored convert as well would work at the cost of two life. So, warlords elite are a really good target for enter the god pharaoh. I would expect that's what we're going to see here. Mm -hmm. Um, oh. well, he doesn't have. Uh, the God Pharaoh yet, but oh, he does have okay. Sheen Fire, and he's gearing up to. Sorry, I, I thought that was uh, I thought that was one of his cards. Um... No, no, sorry, I was just saying he had the mana available for it. Well, well, I'll tell you what is he has right now. He's got a mountain. He's got an excavation explosion, and he has a Sheep Fire. All right. Um... And uh, some people at home might be wondering, oh, last turn, uh, he's got a two one, a one one, and a one one that uh, pings. So couldn't he just all block Cub Warden and trade Ooh. for that? Uh, if he wanted to, and the answer is uh, actually no, because he knows that Dan would probably know that he can just not kill the devil and yeah. assign damage differently, and then uh, it would not be a trade of all his creatures for the Cub Warden. Instead, he would just lose two creatures for free. Yeah, that came up this turn as well on potentially like a block of like chronic, like uh, yeah, chronic or Firefinder and the and and the Devil Token. Although there, you don't need mm -hmm. to overassign to have that happen um yeah it looks like that's gonna kill the first four four mm -hmm. now he's drawn uh curate so he's gonna tap his black because he doesn't need it 
and this is quite interesting. He is looking at the top of his deck at an island and at a cunning geyser mage. And I think what is likely to happen is he's going to be putting the island in the graveyard and keeping the geyser mage. It does make some sense. Um, geyser mage, I believe, cannot bounce your own creature. Is that right? Because um, otherwise, see, you can pick one other target creature to its owner's hand. Oh. So I think he is potentially uh, bringing this Cloud Piercer back to him yeah, if he wants. That to. could be pretty good here. Could uh, if he chooses to do so, he could also bounce the four four and attack for a couple damage. That's a play you can make. Suddenly, though, uh, Dan's got a House Gold Slash and a Trumpet Blast in hand, not doing too much. But a House Gold Slash is going to blow out this gang block here really badly. This is... Uh, mm. He doesn't get to kill all the walkers, but he gets to kill the Chronicler, which is nice. Uh, and then he yeah. gets to kill his Warlords Elite again. It might have been slow, but the Cloud Piercer, it really uh, might have been good to just get him a blocker, get him uh, maybe get rid of a land, I mean, try to find another spell. The argument for not doing that is very concise. It's that you're at 10 life, um, and, yes. and bouncing your Cloud Piercer, getting attacked for 7 without great blocks, like your, your gang block still gets blown out that way as well. And Dan's drawn... Well, this is really scary hours for, for Richard here, because Dan's drawn Kelvin Overseer, the sideboard include, which comes in and steals a blocker, um, and has haste in its own right. So, Dan's, wow. so, uh, Dan's, so Dan is going to have quite a good attack here, if he wants to. He cannot, fortunately for Richard, also use the Trumpet Blast in his hand. That's just too much mana. Um, it looks like he's just going to attack with his big boys and maybe force a chump, and then try an Overseer next turn, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. But this is going to let Richard do a double block without getting blown out, uh, I have to assume. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> it's still him accepting the on-the-face uh, one for two. Yeah, it's not it's not great, obviously, but um, I don't know. Like When you only have one creature in play, I think you just feel... And that just feel that's just a lot less than two, you know. Sometimes. <laughs> um, and I guess, uh, given what you said about the Kelvin Overseer, this is going to be a game two, and then going into you are, you game are three. Here. Yeah, Dan had it all figured out. Exactly seven damage. All right, we're going to game three for all of the marbles, uh, but first we have some sideboarding. Yeah, down to the wire, play of the year. Couldn't have it any other way. I'm glad we got a good match for this one. Um, any changes off of Richard's side? Um, he is putting Hercule back as uh, potentially too mana intensive and uh, as a 2 4, maybe not the blocker that he's looking for. Rampaging Cyclops coming in. He's saying, I could use a 4 mana 4 4, and if I'm on the play, maybe this the, the blocking text. Uh, is not uh, something that is going to be too much of a problem for me. And over in uh, Dan's side? Uh, nothing yet. He's just been looking at the cards. Uh, he's moved a couple to the maybe bin. He's maybe taken out Crawling Chorus and Scrapper Champion, the double striker. Just mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see what the ad was there. That happened too quickly for me, unfortunately. So mousing over the inspired charge. The champion's gone, which I guess makes sense. You know, as a as a four mana two two that dies to Shivan Fire, uh, that that's a bad run of play for that to happen. Yep. Um Koffler has just decided to ship it, uh just with the uh swap of a three mana two four for the four mana four four. Mm -hmm. Um and was considering a Teferi's time twist. Uh, to answer some of the removal from from Dan, but has opted not to in the end. <clears throat> so, were there any other final changes from the from Dan side? No, that would be everything. Um... All right. Hmm, interesting, and 
probably going to be a keep. Uh, Cuffler has perfect enter, enter the God Eternal's mana. Um, ex like, everything that he needs, and then an Excavation Explosion, and that's it. Dan's got a hand which is a, is a keep, but it's a bit air-filled. So he's got four lands. His keep was four lands, Aether Chaser, Coordinated Charge, and a Cycler. Um, and he's drawn a three drop. He's drawn the Banalish Marshal. It's going to have to come down on four, because it needs white, white, white. He's also got the Crawling Barons in hand as a Mana Sink, so I, I like the keep. It just doesn't quite, like... If you want to keep a hand with coordinated charge, you want more than one creature in your opener, but it's going to work out for him, especially if he gets to attack and make the server, but it looks like that is not happening here. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, I think lining up the... Uh, when he drops Benelish Marshall, it's going to be the Enter the God Eternal's target immediately. So now Koffler has drawn a Kazul's Fury, and and uh, has a mere Convert in hand. So I imagine he's just going to be playing out the Convert, um, potentially blocking and potentially using the Kazul's Fury to just uh, have this 3-1 uh, not be so bothersome. Well, this 3-1's going to get a lot more bothersome because he's drawn the Cartouche of Solidarity here. So he could either... Um, which, which is a bit, you know, obviously risky to run out into three open mana, especially three open Grixis mana. So we might choose to uh, not play that this turn and play the Marshal instead. Um, mm -hmm. Looks like he's mulling over his options here. He's got a couple, you know, legitimate paths to consider. He could just start by cycling startling development, just get a look at another card. It doesn't do anything other than cycle, anyways. Yeah. I suppose the potential one downside for that would be he would be using his red mana to cycle. Right, uh, and that that might not really yeah, make much of a difference. Your, you might draw your red card. Yeah. So he's exerting now, and now Kalfor has to decide: Do I want to use this Kazul's Fury to just not have this four two be so bothersome? And he says, "No, it's fine." Yeah, I think that would have been a an overreaction, especially when convert tapping for mana can help you for a turn or two unload your hand. Yeah, and so here he's gonna. Once again, mill, uh, mill Dan, and enter the, uh, enter the God Eternals and exit the Banalis Marshal stage left. Yep, <laughs> just flipping that board a bit, and getting his first uh, poison <laughs> token on yeah, for the, whatever that's worth. The two power toxic one creature that kills you equally fast both ways. Uh, never been a favorite of mine personally. Uh, uh, well, if um, if Dan still has the renewed faith in his uh, in his deck, it could mm. could come to pass that the poison know. matters more than more than uh, the damage. He maybe had a chance there to play the Cartouche of Solidarity, have a one one which could block the convert, and he has a Lauren's Escape in hand as well to save the Avenger from removal. Um, but he's opting instead, I think, to uh, pass, and he's going to, I have to guess, pump Crawling Barons in end step. That makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure what else he's, he's doing with his time. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Koffler has uh, Lull Mage's Domination, uh, Glimmer of Genius, and a Kazul's Fury. So but he could just yoink right now. Avenger right now if he wanted to. Yes. And if he, did, if he did, Dan would just be in so much trouble, because he would have, he's two cards which require you to target a creature you control um, and a coordinated charge. So he would just be, you know, all in on this Crawling Barons, and that's a tough place to be. And it looks like that is going to be... Sorry, I'm, I'm very silly. Lorian's Escape is going to save it. Um, uh -huh. And this is going to work out really well for Dan, because I uh, I forgot what one of his cards did. Um, Okech's Avenger... So Dan scryed Cub Warden to the top. Avenger is a human, so I have to imagine we're going to see Cub Warden just on the field. He's also going to... Well, Cub Warden could mutate... Oh, could mutate the, the one Vigilance one. token. Yeah, yeah, the, the flavor loss that we saw before. All right. Look at these lines. Yeah, this is... Uh... Now Richard's suddenly in a ton of trouble. This coordinated charge in Dan's hand has gone from looking um, looking dead to, to looking fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is quite interesting, though. Koffler has now drawn a Lord Dracus, which he can mutate onto the Amaz token and get a large, large blocker and potentially bring back Lil Mage's Domination or he... whatever instant he wishes. Oh, Probably Enter oh, so the God Eternals would be better, well, so, so, 
Dan, I think he can do it all. Because he can go red, red, mutate Lord Gracchus. Dan has eight cards in the bin, so Lull Mage's Domination costs uh, three less. So you can go red, red, mutate, get back Lull Mages, take your Cub Warden. Wow. <laughs> I think he sees the line. What a top deck. What a top deck. And this time there's no Lord's Escape to save him. I was, I think I was like harsh on the Lord Dracus in the, um, in the poker video. I was like, it's, it's going to be okay. It's never going to, you know, run away with the game. And here, assuming, yeah, I think he's mousing over the Law Mages Domination. I think it's going to steal him a game and with it potentially the entire tournament. Yeah. What it's what we'll a have to, we'll have to see because I mean you know there's tokens with lifelink that can get pumped up and then as well as a crawling barret so there's a lot of uh, eight or more cards. a lot of things going on Hot this ex this also explains why he milled Dan with the oh my god with the with the God Eternals it did everything yep unbelievable <laughs> and and uh, everything. Everything that Koffer has been doing that has been kind of a question mark has been answered in full here. It's just a beautiful crescendo where all of the pieces sort of come together for, for that really excellent turn there. Um, and, and now Dan is in a world of hurt. He's drawn a Sun Scourge champion, which will gain him life, block, die, and then come back, gain him more life. So the game is not going to end, but he's certainly on the back foot. Um, this Crawling Barons could maybe be a thing here. If he takes a turn off, he pumps it up to four. That might work out better than, um, yeah, than playing champion. It looks like that's what he's going to do. Um, mm -hmm. He could also cycle Coordinated Charge. This doesn't feel like a Coordinated Charge game anymore. Uh, although it does right. pump the power on Oketra's Avenger, which is somewhat useful. All right, Richard's drawing some cards. You hate to see it if you're Dan, but... I'm not sure what else you would actively like to see. Um, mm -hmm. What's Richard got in his hand now? Scribe two lands at the bottom. He's got a Kazul's Fury, a Vindictive Flame Stoker, Pyroceratops, and Koth. And the interesting thing here is that um, depending on the double blocks, he can actually Kazul's Fury his convert, uh, stack his convert to mm. kill the Oketra, Oketra's Avenger. I have, if I had to guess, I would think the block here would be Barons plus Cat on Cub Warden, which also gets yeah. blown out by Convert killing the Cat. Um, but not to the point of actually killing the Barons, because Barons is a 4-4. Yeah. Um, looks like Dan is, is not sure whether or not he wants to make Crawling Barons into a creature, like w which is a separate choice from pumping it, which you can mm -hmm. do if you want to grow it but not expose it to removal so he's he's got to think do i want to just take nine here and the answer is no so now we have it as a creature um it's close to just being him dead to kazul's fury lord rack is to the face so it's it's a good thing he went for this block here um oh man Could you, richard so, have any other burn <laughs> um i mean richard I don't, unless Koth really gets out there uh, mm. to, to get the emblem that makes the mountains uh, deal four damage to any target. He's got the excavation explosions. Uh, but nothing which, in hand. Yeah, nothing in hand, correct. Um, if, if you're Kothler, I, I do have to wonder, like, maybe it's even worth it just to kill the Barons. It's a uh, concerning card, I would yeah, say. Yeah, it can be the biggest thing on the board. Um... It looks like he's just going to take the trade here. Okay. And so he's... I think this means he's just going to try to kill with damage. Um, interesting. Okay. So the trouble with relying on Crawling Barons right, is you have to put four, man to, four mana into it every turn, which is quite a lot. You cannot just leave it as a creature. Um, mm -hmm. That said, oh, those are some good draws here. He's drawn Ambush Paratrooper, Flash Blocker, two mana, which you can you can use with Crawling Barons. Although you can't... Um, only in the order where you 
Okay, he's not going to do Call of Crawling Barons this turn, so I can put that aside. He's going to play Sun Scourge Champion um, and hold up Ambush Paratrooper and Gideon's Reproach as his two cards. And he's at four but doesn't know it because of the flame that Richard has in hand. So Richard has now drawn a mountain. So this opens up quite a few lines because he now has access to both Kazul's Fearing as well as pre-combat Koth to remove something. But it looks like he's actually going to be developing his Pyroceratops first. If you um, Koth, Koth, Kill Avenger, Swing Out... Yeah, that would be one off. That's funny. Uh, and yeah, just playing playing Creature playing Koth here is going to get the first of the sad Karn emote. I guess the Beach Karn emote. Because this is just mm -hmm. going to, you know, still kill um, probably Oketra's Avenger here. And yeah. you don't even need to fling. You can have the fling a hand for next turn. You're going to be attacking for mm -hmm. six, forcing a chump, and, and Dan... Um, I don't know what he can draw at this point. Like This is not uh, not the spot he wants to be in. Not at all. I think possibly he just lets it hit him. Yeah, I'm not sure what his other option is. He did not, notably, he did not have the mana to flash in, double block, and then approach three for one in yourself. Scrapbook Cohort, a good draw here. Um, but all it looks like it's going to do to my eyes is make him die to the fling rather than to creature damage. Yes. Looks like this game is wrapped up. All right, let's see. Does Richard find the line? <laughs> <laughs> he could get blown out. He knows Dan has the instant game life, and he's just going for it, and Dan, there's nothing Dan can do. We yeah. have a new player of the year, everybody. Congratulations to Richard. Tremendously well played, tremendously deserved. The three-week Richard proving to be the most powerful player in the league for this year. Uh, let's give him yeah. a round of applause. GG's one. <laughs>